Hey, I'm Kev Kev, Mr. Cole, welcome back to MotoGP 18 has Ian McDonald. It's didn't have the best time on the red pool ring. It started off well, he qualified and then in the race, the rain came, did not go well. Let's see if he does better around the Masano World Circuit, Marco Simenche. But before we go there, reduce the difficulty down to 90. We're just going to see if this level's our level at the moment. Then maybe increase it if we get better or decrease it. We'll see how it goes. As here we are, round the Marzano World Circuit. Marco Simoncelli in Italy. The San Marino Grand Prix is the home race for Mario. Unfortunately, did not get to a good start in qualifying. Validates that lap, which invalidates the next lap. And now we head on to his effort. The lap that he wants to try and grab pole with as he heads towards the first corner around the circuit, which Actually, just quite similar the ones in the past. It's a bit tighter, maybe, in this section, but then it feels maybe a bit wider in others. But you still have this section that really has to you have to flow together through these two right handers coming up through the first one, nicely clipping the curves in the second one, and then you got to switch the bike back. Just be very confident with the power of going all over the curbs. Maybe a bit too much as he's a 10th down through the first sector to Carrasco. He's on a 45 too as you go down this back straight towards the hairpin. And this corner actually feels a bit easier. Maybe in this edition compared to years past as you can see the bike just nicely nestles into the apex here. Now on the exit through the double right feels a bit wider this time but very tight into this second right, very difficult to break for. And he's still down to Carasma, but he's, as you can see, he's doing PBs, he's doing orange laps. And now we head towards the four right-handers from hell. First two are flat out though, as it's really gentle, and then it just gets tighter and tighter. And it's so tricky trying to judge the break you for this corner. You can see a bit cautious maybe on this that, but nice and tidy. He's still a 10th down. He's still doing personal bests, but great exit from the hairpin. Now into the penultimate corner, just keeping it in second gear. He's losing all the curb. He's losing a bit more as well. And into the final corner, which actually is a bit easier than the past. As you can see, you've got lots of curb in either side now to kind of use to your advantage as he runs for the line. And he nails those last couple of corners. And it's a 44 as he grabs both pole pole. From Mario's second pole. And then the Red Bull rookies come ahead of Carrasco and the Turkish. And then you've got Tatai leading the second row, I believe. He's leading the championship. Almost grabbed that title with Leidenberg at the back. So, very good qualifying as we head to the race and look at the grid and everyone on medium tyres for this four out race in the heat in Italy. Slash San Marino in quotation marks as we look through the field and there you can see your usual suspects at the back. But now for Mario McDonald, lives up on the grid, waiting for the lights to go out for this four lap race and it's a bit of a slow one as he lets the Spaniard get by. He's dropping back down to third. It's just like Magello all over again. He's here towards the first corner. Can he make a move? No, he looks very harsh defending from the Spaniard from the Turkish fella. And then we've been attacked from behind as you go through the right hand, and this is a corner which feels like an ocean width now. Why? You can really take that flat out, but again, it might just because we're on the smaller bike. So, as he gets into second place, does Mario, but not making any moves. While well, his good friend Ivanberg making moves further down the field, 22nd pass Hertas, and he's in third. He's in a turkey sandwich at the moment. As you can see, four tenths behind the top two, but more like five tenths on this back straight. It's Hertas up to 21st, Japanese rider up to fifth now and there's a championship leader in seventh not a very good opening up and oh there's a good pass behind into the hairpin you're going to see lots of passes into that in this race has hurt us into the top 20 now there's sean kelly he's making some progress in the end the flying fin up to 13th as you can see seven tenths behind the top two riders four tenths ahead the rider behind has got max cook up the 21st and again jeffy trying to make that move in the double right very good passing spot if you can get side by side out of that hairpin. And you're seeing that, we've seen it in front as well. They're trying to go side by side in the fast right, it's not quite working. It's all spanned up to 12th as well. There's a Swiss rider and there's Ibo trying to get into the top 20. And you've got Jackson as well trying to make some moves in towards the top 20 as it is still 
very close between the top two, but here he comes. McDonald all over the curves and some in this final sector, which he's very good at making a move for. Second, very bash. Very attacking past the Turkish rider. And up into second for the second lap. Kukrasko right in front. As you can see, the top 10 being rounded out by Garcia behind the Brazilian. As you can see, a Czech rider in there as well in the top 10 in seventh. So you can see Tedai making his way into the top five now. Down in the Turkish rider as well. As you've got Jackson up to 22nd. Matt's cut dropping like a stone in the early part of this race has. Got Spaniard up to 11 now, ahead of the Italian, and then Dan Jones in the top 20 now, taking it away from Nivenberg. Well, once again, just not hooking up in this first sector. Mayo to get in that slipstream to make a move into this hairpin, and he's perhaps nicking again in the second half of that to make the moves. And the first half he's seen in qualifying as well, he's just not quite got that pace there. As he's used a bit closer now, coming out the hairpin. But not close enough to make the move into the double right is he takes a little look but Carrasco three tenths in front that's a bit too big of a gap to make up and now he might get some slipstream and then towards the double right so look at Jasperson as well Jasperson shall I say you say Jacobson it's Jasperson making a move up the 22nd ever as we go through the first right flat out in through the second has the Turkish right ahead of fourth Again, ahead of the Japanese rider. And we've got another Japanese rider on the move down up to 12th ahead of the Italian. And as you can see, look at this. All over the back of Carrasco is McDonald as he approached the halfway mark of this race. We've got Teta in 5th. got Garcia in ninth, And look at McDonald around the outside. No way, he's kicking up the dirt into the final corner. But Carrasco just about holds him off. As you approach the line going on to the penultimate lap of this race, it is neck and neck between the top two. And he's got to sit go towards the first corner. And the crowd go wild for Mario. As he takes the lead in San Marino, does the San Marino rider. And he just holds off Carrasco just through the first sector. And now can he hold off and maybe pull away from the Spaniard? And that's a big blow for Carrasco as well in the championship with his rival down the order. Could have taken some good points off him. Still will in second, but you know, those extra five points you get for winning could be vital in the end as he is a quarter of a second back. We get the slip stream head towards the hairpin. It looks like he will be close, but have you seen in the past, Mayo very good at breaking into this corner. And for some reason, this circle is just so hooked up. It's a bit like Magello as well for Mayo. Just so hooked up around these Italian circuits. Maybe no surprise as well as you go through the double right and there you can see so easy to do that and that will break yourself if you just want to try and carry speed as that second right you just can't be too aggressive you just got to be hitting your marks through those couple of corners can't when really you attack through that corners you could have definitely attack through these right handers though but you held on as Stuart Garcia up to eighth no Baltas up to eighth now <laughs> They're trying to exchange positions every corner. It looks like as McDonald leads by the number of the devil ahead of Carrasco now as he approached the final couple of corners of this penultimate lap. Just one more lap to go as the Fini is battling for points ahead of the Vitz in 16th. Though the Belgian wants that, wants to try and battle for those points instead as he goes for the final corner. That's a much smoother run out of that final corner as he sets a 45 5. Not very good that time compared to what he did in qualifying those 44s but he's good enough heading on to the final of Hedo Carrasco and then got the Turkish fellas in third and fourth and then Tassai ran out the top five has he looked through the field is overtaken having everywhere it's a, it feels like kind of calm and serene to McDonald at the front of the field but look at behind it is absolute madness passes happening everywhere there's a bit like Magello again where we were just watching the top two battle and then there's loads of battles happening all behind. You saw that in the Saxon ring, in Assen as well, in the res. Pa pass are happening throughout the field all the time, but you just don't really see it as the Swiss ride up to 14 head of the Australian and all a bit of the rear end coming out there. Tommy may not be an issue. Maybe throttle control will be as the Spaniard is up to fourth now. Head on the Turkish brothers, I believe that is, has... Carrasco, three quarters of a second, but Manolo can just cruise it through these final couple of corners. Dan Jones up to 19th. Oh, is he? Now, as we've got Alfano back up there, and we've got Eibenberg up the 21st ahead of Jasperson as he go through the double right. 
and then into the tighter right coming up as the Swiss rider up to 40. Now the Australian takes it back as it's just one set to the go for McDonald. He's still six to Taylor Carrasco is pegging McDonald. He really dropped back after getting overtaken on that previous lap, but on this lap, he's keeping the pace up. In his final couple of corners, just one corner to go before the home hero, Mario McDonald, wins his first race in the Red Bull Rookies Cup. He's going to be a static. All the drinks are going to be on him tonight. As, of course, you get lots of reward and prestige for doing that. As we're up to level seven now. But for Mario McDonald, what a win. What a time to do it as well. In the championship with just two races remain in just one race now. He wins by a second on home turf. Did a fast lap of 44 8. Just back in what we did in qualifying. You got the Turkish rider in third or fourth, then the Spaniard in fifth, Japanese rider, CF Czech Republic in seventh, then the Belgian in eighth, then the Colombian in ninth. As he was rounding out the top 10 as we scroll through the field. Digging out that top five, thinking about the implications for the championship as well. It's a Spaniard who rounds out the top ten, Xavier. And then we've got the Brazilian just missing out. And it's Australian who pipped the Swiss rider to that final point. And Nicholas Hernandez in 26th. As in the riders' championship, it's a 21 point lead then. He's virtually grabbed the title, but Carrasco drags it to the final round. As we've got the Turkish rider in third or fourth. And look at Mario up to seventh. After dropping out the top 10, what a response. And he's six points behind the Czech rider. Ten points behind fourth. If it goes his way, you never know what could happen. In the final round of the season, the Australian down to eighth. The big loser after this race. After battling just for a single point in the end. And we've got Stuart Garcia in nine. We've got Bazin down to tenth as well. He's looking through the field. It's 20 rides of score points so far this season. The Swiss rider just missing out, as you can see. That is heartbreaking for him. And it looks like we've got the... Is that the Indonesian at the back? Unfortunately, as we look at the reputation we have earned as well. Let's see how many levels we got. Oh, it's just one. No, it's two, isn't it? Level 45 for everything. Just getting there for rider position. But for management, up there, lean angle and brakes wrench as well. As we look at the social feeds, then Divizioso won the head of Marcus and Rossi. Moto 2, Baldessai, head of Marcus and Bandaya, and Jorge Martin, head of Alucanet, and Marco Bezzecchi. And there is Mario de San Marino winning the San Marino Grand Prix. What a fantastic event. What a way to win for Mario. What an event to win as well for his first victory. Could have asked for a better event to win as we try and look through the other results in Britain. The Vizio is ahead of Marcus and Johan Zarco. Good to see some variety with a Yamaha there. Not the works Yamaha though. And Bednaya, Alex Marcus, Abaldasari in Moto2 and in Moto3, Jorge Martin, Bezeki and Arnold Kinnett. So a bit surprising not that to see the factory Yamaha on the podium there in Britain. As you scroll through and can see the Austrian results again has the rare email from our personal manager telling us about contract offers. If we do well, we get some offers. If we don't, we don't get some offers. And depending on our reputation, the more fans you get to follow us is exactly like MotoGP 17. So for Mario, if you're trying to do well, trying to get some more results like we just saw there in the San Marino Grand Prix. But for the finale, we head back to Spain and the most and Aragon circuit. Can Mario somehow back up his first victory we have another one around the tricky circuit in Spain. It's a finale we've seen previously for McDonald's, which have been controversial, but will be for May. Can he grab a top five in the championship or will be falling down the order once again? He's been all over the place this season, but if he ends it on a high. But I hope you enjoyed the episode. Sound watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>